So there you can see Penny Pincher reduces the cost of all repairs. Um, we've got one over there called Everybody's Friend, removes the reagent requirement for all raid-wide buff spells. Figured you'd like that one, for sure. Here's a couple other examples. So on the left, we've got cash flow, increases the gold drop rate for all kills from creatures or players that, re that reward experience or honor. And on the right over there, you can see mass resurrection. Um, and obviously, mass resurrection is down at the bottom of the tree. And we want this tree to feel just like any other talent tree would feel. We want you to, to have the decisions to be meaningful. We want you to pick you know, these talents because you feel like they're really good for your guild specifically. The whole goal here is to create diversity among the guilds. You might be a guild that chooses to go all the way down and get Mass Resurrection there, but you don't see the talent right next to it is Raid Summon, which allows you to summon your whole raid to you at one time instantly. Now that might be something you might want instead. And there's, there's just a wide variety of this stuff. There's talents that are great for leveling, some that are great for PvP. You know, we, we try to cover the gamut. And yes, these are definitely going to be re-talentable. You can definitely respec your guild talents. So there's a second concept that goes along with this. As you're earning guild experience, we're basically going to convert that experience and right away when you earn it into guild currency. And currency for your guild is the way that you're going to be able to buy cool rewards and things that will help your guild out. Um, and we've got a ton of things that you can buy with this stuff. We've got vanity items, we'll do things like mounts, we'll do things like standards that will have your, your guild insignia on them. So when you get that first boss kill, you can throw down a standard, it's got your guild logo on it, take your screenshots. Um, we'll have things like mounts that'll have flags from your guild, uh, a variety of stuff. Guild currency will be used to pay for your talent respects, for example. So if you want to respect your guild quite a lot, you're going to have to be earning enough experience to get that currency to do it. The biggest thing probably you'll be buying with the currency, though, is the guild profession plans. These are what allow you to make guild heirlooms. Now, guild heirlooms are going to be able to be built by any of the any people that have that profession in your guild. So the way this is going to work is you'll buy the plan for the guild and it'll actually show up on a skill vendor. The same way you would go to the blacksmith skill trainer and you would buy a recipe from him. Anyone in your guild that has the required profession rank to actually use it can go to this guy, buy the plan, and learn it right away. Now if he leaves the guild, he then loses the recipe, obviously because he's not in the guild anymore. So the kind of picture I think you're kind of catching on, the idea is we really want people to feel like it's valuable to be in the guild and you want to stay in the guild. You don't want to bounce around necessarily as much because you're getting these great benefits from being here, which really makes you want to have a great guild. So the professions. The plan here is that everyone's going to have access to it via the skill trainer. We're going to do this also, we're going to have a guild vendor. And these are going to be in all the major cities. You'll be able to go there and spend the currency. We're planning to permission the currency, so we'll have a new permission in the guild systems panel that'll allow you to set up who in the guild can spend the currency. Um, so that'll be up to you guys to figure out. Now, the guild heirlooms are bound to the guild, so if you're wearing, like, say, I don't know, a, a chess piece, and you leave the guild, that you'll get a warning, and as soon as you leave the guild, that chess piece will automatically get returned to the guild bank. So no more, you know, working up to that, that item that you guys have been trying to get to for a long time and then the guy takes it and then bounces and leaves the guild. Now those items will go back and stay with you. So the concept here is that these work like our other heirlooms. They're going to scale with level um, and we plan to cover, we, we would like to cover all the professions and as many slots as we can get for this stuff. We really want it to feel like we've got everything covered. So now... Besides guild heirlooms, you're also going to be able to make just normal items that will also be great for the guild. Um, and you'll buy these as plans the same way, but they might not make heirlooms. They might make things like, say, uh, potions or elixirs, things that you can use during raids. 
And the concept behind these is they're also bound to the guild, so you can only use them if you're in the guild, but there's talents in the talent tree that will benefit this stuff. So there can be talents in the tree that increase the effectiveness of, uh, of potions that you might, or elixirs that you might drink during a raid. And so you get those benefits by staying in the raid, in the guild. <laughs> One last thing on the guild currency is you're also going to be able to buy reagents. So for some of these new heirlooms, we want to use some of the, the new profession items that people are going to be mining and herbs and things that you're going to find out in the world, but we're also going to have reagents that you can buy directly. And that's another way that you can spend that guild currency. So instead of maybe having to use a frost lotus for every pot you make, you might be able to buy a guild reagent and use that instead. All right, looking for guild. This is something that we've wanted to do for a while. We really wanted to find a way for those players that want to get into a guild to have that be easier, but also come up with a great way for guild leaders to be able to find new members that they're looking for. And so the concept of the system is that we're basically gonna let you filter based on various requirements of what you're looking for. Um, the interface, we want it to be pretty simple, not complicated, because we want new players to be able to hop into the game, be able to find a guild, and not have too much difficulty. So here's an example of a, a mock-up of what we would, we would concept for this. So you can pick your availability, weekdays and weekends. You pick your class role, your level. Now, this screen you're seeing right here is what a guild would see when they're recruiting for members. So they can say they're only looking for max level. They can say the type of play style they want, casuals, hardcores. And then down at the bottom, you can make a comment. For instance, you can only raid after 7.30, something like that. And then people could see this stuff and be able to filter through it. Okay, guild achievements. This is something, another thing we wanted to do along to expand the achievement system to really support the idea of, of doing something really great in the game but doing it with your friends. So the concept here, like I mentioned earlier, is that we're gonna have a ratio. And the ratio is basically gonna be, we're shooting for about 75%, like I said, so in a 25 person raid, as long as you have 20 players there from your raid, you would then earn those achievements. We're planning to do new achievements for this system, as well as go back and take some achievements from our existing dungeons and raids and make them into guild achievements. So if you look at, say, Oldowar, it's got over 50 achievements, you know, we'd probably go back there and maybe take uh, four or five total achievements, and they'd usually be for, say, clearing uh, one whole section of the dungeon. We're not going to go back and take everything like Hot Pocket and turn it into like a guild achievement. So here's a couple examples of what some things that we think could be cool guild achievements. Become a Grand Master in all professions. So this would mean your guild, you would want to have exactly what it says, but one person that's a Grand Master in everything, and doing that would give you that guild achievement. Um, perhaps completing a legendary item, something that typically can only happen within a guild. And these would be achievements that you'd get rewarded for. So here's a look at uh, kind of a mock-up of what we could see this system looking like. So there's a new category in the left of the achievement panel for guild, and over there on the right you can see those. Um, this one in there, become exalted with all factions, United Nations, it's a good example of one. I think uh, we actually have that achievement for single players now. Someone actually gets that too, but we, the idea of doing this for a guild. And then down at the bottom, you can see the concept. It would be showing like your guild logo when this pops up. And everyone in the guild would see that when your guild gets the achievement. So finishing up, a couple new features we're talking about. Um, one big thing in the interface is to do a guild news feed. I've got a mock-up of this for you guys to see in just a minute here. But the concept is that we'd show, you know, the last uh, maybe two to three days worth of things that have happened within the guild. And this would be right on the guild pane when you log in. We're going to do a whole new, new UI for the guild pane. And it would show things like boss kills. It would show things like um, loot, loot that's been um, picked up by different members of your guild, uh, reputation gain, profession gain, uh, characters.